I had a, I had a moment like that when my phone was really screwing up. I couldn't. Get, I thought it had a voice function or something. I couldn't answer a phone call, and so I was just shouting at my phone, "Answer! Answer!" Just imagine, agent, agent, answer! Damn you! Kyle, I'm gonna watch you yell at your phone. New mini series. Kind of AI are you? New mini series. Kyle yelling at inanimate objects. We'll you are a lamp. That's our new. <laughs> That's our new Patreon exclusive <laughs> tier. Twenty dollars a month. You get one five second video per month of Kyle screaming at some inanimate <laughs> object. Toast. Make toast. Make toast now. This is the best idea we've ever had. This is our million dollar idea, Kyle. You screaming at inanimate Kyle screams at inanimate objects, and that's the theme song we just came up with. There we go, perfect. Oh shit. Kyle screams at inanimate objects. Make toast. Hello, and welcome back to the 90th episode of Good, Bad, or Bad, Bad Show. We watch terrible movies. I'll tell you if you should too. I'm your host, Mr. Brian Shilgo, across the table, the other half of Good, Bad, or Bad, Bad, Mr. Kyle Hinton. We're in a we're in a we're in a real a real groove of uh, recent terrible films. Very recent. <laughs> ah, this films. one came out like this year or last early late last year, um, I believe. Um, it's a 2018 film. I'm not gonna lie. I thought this was a Hallmark film. The more I watched it, I think that's what they're going for. <laughs> but it's very clearly not because boy, it's terrible. Like not that Hallmark films are great. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. But they at least generally are like f- slightly competently produced. Hey, they get Dean Kane for Hallmark films. <laughs> yeah, uh, but they usually, you know, have a crew working on them that while they're not doing anything wildly creative or interesting, yeah, know how to yeah, th- knock out. Yeah, uh, this is what the soap opera crew does when they're not doing soap opera. Right. Uh, this one, though, very clearly the crew involved not <laughs> had no clue what they were doing. Is that Rose's car? Um, there's some moments that the movie looks like a movie, and then lots of moments where it doesn't really uh, look very particularly good. Um, it's what is this title? This title? This movie? Mount Hideaway Mysteries, Mysteries colon X's, X's and, and O oh No's. <laughs> Which originally, so this I found this is based on a TV show. Mm-hmm. Or, or it was originally written as a TV show, kind of like 365 Days or Deadly Attraction or whatever. Yeah. What? I gotta fight my dad. And then they said, oh, we're gonna rewrite it into a movie and just release a movie. And they actually shot the movie. Uh, it's written, co written, and produced by and stars the main uh, person, and uh, um, Michaela of something. That's like the opposite of Cruel Intentions, the sequel to Cruel Intentions, because they ended up rewriting it. They put it out. They were going to make it as a movie. But then they're like, we, this is sucking real bad. So <laughs> is there any way we can like cut this into like a four part miniseries? Gotcha. <laughs> yeah. Well, this one's a uh, it was started as a TV show. They ended up making it a movie. Um, and it's I don't know what this is supposed to be. Is it? Like is what it is mysteries? So the the genre on IMDb says like drama, thriller, mystery. I think maybe and comedy maybe is is on there. It's a generous statement. Ah, uh, um, but the I don't know what the, like I'm trying to think of what this is supposed like what other, what real like real movie is this supposed to be similar to or TV show like what are they going I, I, for? I do have something. It was um. Uh, it was the woman who wrote Gone Girl. She wrote another film. Oh, did was she? Si- si- a little similar to this, but it's about somebody who was uh, came back to their hometown and was investigating either a disappearance or a murder. Okay, so that's similar idea. So the, this this movie is about this 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 woman who comes home to her town, uh, which I don't remember or care what the name is. Well, like in any growing town, there's a constant struggle between the past and the future. In Stevens Mill. And she was a former secret operative, special opera. What I never is that made clear what the heck she used to do. She was just like, 
a I was special in, agent. In the agency. The agency. The agency. Yeah. You're the best operative and asset handler I've ever met. And what happened in August wasn't your fault. <laughs> uh, but she has like um her her only ability seems to be that like she can kind of do some gung like kung fu, but she said that she learned were, that growing up. Were you did you get a real uh pocket man and cargo oh, vibe Oh, 100%. This whole film? <laughs> uh this movie is an hour and 40 minute commercial for homeschooling. Yes. <laughs> we went to high school together. I thought you were homeschooled, James. That's what this movie is. Not not just homeschooling, like a co-op. Well, uh my mom taught us in elementary school, but we later joined a co-op. Co-op. Basically, yeah. you just you just meet you, you have a group of parents who are like, "Hey, I'm an expert in the field of pull right. out card social studies." Yeah. <laughs> Well, and they, but they, it's the, my favorite thing is that numerous times over the course of this movie, the movie like turns to camera and it's like, let me deliver a PSA about <laughs> homeschooling to you. Basically, the parents would teach subjects they were experts in and uh, even lead some field trips. Was well, that even legal? Mom. <sighs> Many successful people are homeschooled. When I was younger, and, <laughs> exactly. yeah, and they're like, and they look, they even have like the like anticipated response of people being like, well, but I thought homeschooling meant you didn't get to hang out with any other kids. And they're and the kids like, actually, uh, when we form a co-op, you get to hang out and even go on field trips and stuff. It's just like being in a real school or whatever. And like they have so many times where they're just like, oh. Yeah, homeschooling, super great, which is really interesting. This must have been made by a homeschooling, like, group or something <laughs> of people who, like, that's what they do. Anyways. Where'd you learn to fight like that? I was homeschooled. So we'll start at the, the beginning, uh, and where we start in the beginning is a subtitle that says, Seven Years Ago. <laughs> you don't... Okay. If you're starting... In the very first thing we see, and the subtitle says seven years ago, from what? We have no frame of reference for what seven years ago even means. You would you would just have this scene play out, and then at the end of the scene, you would write seven years later. because yes. And then cut to the yes. current time. You yes. wouldn't say seven years ago before we've ever seen it. I was already out of the gate. I was like, oh, no. And also, also having these clearly... Late twenties, early thirties individuals yeah. play high school students. Yeah, was comical. Except for one of them, James looks like a high schooler. I think. I, I, Katie was like, "How old?" Because at one point he's like a real. When we flash forward to the current time, he's like a real estate broker or whatever. Mm. And Katie's like, "Is that fifteen year old a real estate <laughs> broker?" And I was like, "Well," and but the rest of them, yes, very I, clearly I do mid twenties. The way they they uh, tried to be like, "All right, we need to make these these older people look young. How are we going to do that?" Tied back hairs, hat, yeah. backwards hat. Backward hat. I was like, oh, so we open and they're sneaking around this house. And like, a bunch of like, who are these college age hipsters, hipsters like sneaking around in this house? And it turns out they're like doing a fake stealth mission. I, forensic, they're thinking that, so they, they break into this house, they pick the lock and they go and they find a goblet on a shelf. And I ne immediately I knew we were in for like low budget nonsense when, I mean, I, when I watched the trailer, I knew, but when it, like the, the guy, they're like going to grab this, this relic off the shelf, which they're clearly filming this at a historic site for one. Mm -hmm. This is like their like local historic cabin or whatever, but on the shelf they're they're going to grab it. And the guy's like, wait, there might be an alarm. Okay. Oh, there it is. We know. No, no, Rose. There could be an alarm. And then he like looks under the shelf. We don't see anything. And he, he pushes something and a little goes beep. <laughs> fully, and then he's like, fully sound click. Yeah. And then he's like, all right, we're good. It's like nothing happened. <laughs> and then they pull it up. Okay. Um, but then they get captured by the bad guy. He's there watching them. But, oh, it's all a ruse. He was their dad homeschooling Just them on forensic yep, science. Teach them apparently how to be better thieves. Yeah. What he taught them. Yeah, he says, well, because he says, like, you got to think like a thief to catch one or something. Like, whatever. It doesn't matter. So, like I've been saying throughout this class, if you want to learn criminal science and become great detectives... You need to learn to think like a criminal. <laughs> Some of the dialogue, we're getting into like how choice the, the writing is in this right away. One of the kids is just like, 
Uh, thanks again, Dr. Bradford, for um, leading this club. This forensic science project really makes physics, chemistry, and even government a lot more interesting. <laughs> Yeah, all right. What? what are we doing already? That, that is, uh, that is, I'm held at gunpoint and there is a cue card <laughs> yeah. off scene that says, you say this about homeschooling right now. <laughs> yeah. And I love the exposition in the scene because then the dad who's the teaching this class turns to them and goes, luckily, he goes, yeah, isn't this class great? And luckily, Dave, since your dad knows this, he teaches uh, you guys this class. You know, with your dad helping to teach business and Bethany's mom helping out with social studies, you kids are getting some really great projects and field trips along with your homeschool curriculum. Um, so then we cut the present day. They This was just a little flashback to show them learning in their homeschooling class or whatever. And you think that now that, uh, that Bethany, our main character, we see her putting on goggles and stuff and we think she's doing some sort of chemistry because she was into science, but no, she's burning a pie in the oven and it's classic comedy hijinks. This she is can't that, bake. That, that is the most hallmark. That yeah, we were, I think we get in the yeah. Film. Oh yeah, it's like oh look at what when she doesn't oh, know how oh, to bake. All we were missing through that whole thing was like maybe like a piano or a synth kind of like string uh, that would be something a la hallmark. Yeah. <laughs> Only thing Bethany Shanholtz wanted for Christmas was a man. It's been a long time. But Bethany Shanholtz couldn't bake. <laughs> Luckily, she had other skills. This Christmas, Bethany Shanholtz is not like other girls. Where'd you learn to fight like that? I was homeschooled. Only on Hallmark Movie Channel. Yeah, no, it's it's fantastic. Um and immediately you're smacked in the face by how much clumsy and unnecessary camera movement there is in this movie. Constantly, the camera is just doing things for no reason. Mm -hmm. Measuring and following directions just really isn't my thing. No, it's not. You're much better with people than you are with pies. I mean, seriously, I have never met anyone that can connect with every single person that she meets. They're, they're so, they're like, uh, I don't know what they were thinking because there's there they have some normal just like lockdown shots, but almost every other time the camera is just like drifting around as they're moving in the scene aimlessly and for no real reason yeah. to do nothing. It, it illustrates nothing. It provides no added like sim like anything to the movie. It's just and like it probably it, for the most part it disrupts like lead and lead room and whatnot yeah well they even have to fix it at points because there's a point later where the camera she starts walking out of the shot to the right and the camera is panning left and they try to fix it in post by digitally panning the shot right with her and it looks terrible <laughs> it's like to like preserve screen direction Gee they like God. digitally oh it's so oh so many just um, I, I felt personally attacked by all the things in this movie of like, <laughs> I've done that wrong before. I've done that wrong before. I need you to calm down, movie. Stop calling me out so much. Measuring and following directions just really isn't my thing. No, it's not. You're much better with people than you are with pies. This movie's long, Brian. It's really, it's really long. long. It's too long. That's a big criticism of this one. And what's going to, I think, factor into its final verdict quite a bit is that this movie's like an hour and 45 minutes long. This movie should be an hour and 20 yeah. minutes well, I, long. I, I watched it for like 45 minutes or whatever it was. I, I screened, uh, scrolled over the bar. I had an hour and eight minutes on about flipped the table I was on. <laughs> You're like, like good God, this is boring as <laughs> Fuck. Uh, it's not a thrill a minute film for sure. It has its <laughs> moments of uh, fun, but um, so this was recommended by a fan who, uh, who they said this was shot in their hometown, I believe, and that's how they knew of it, and that's why they recommended it to us. I don't know if they were. I didn't <laughs> remember their message saying that they were involved at all. They just like remember seeing something about it. <laughs> oh, seriously, Dad? And the goggles, really? Okay. 
So anyway, uh, we, should we find out? Oh, she likes to feed homeless people. Look, she's so nice. Great. Um, and then now we're, we, we yeah, you know, what, you know what that does remind me of where she has to write herself as the better. Yeah. yeah. I'm the great character is uh, Beverly Hills. Beverly Christmas. Hills Christmas. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's a couple moments of that in this movie where she's like, wow, look how great I am helping the homeless feeding the homeless. It's like, all right, you wrote this movie lady. All right. Hey, saving this bakery is something you couldn't have done anyway. And Maggie, I brought you some help. Oh, really? Ready for duty. The soup kitchen's closed. But, so then we're introduced, she goes to this, uh, the, the church where they're feeding the homeless, and this is a weird scene. So then uh, one of the people there turn on the TV, and they, like, they, they cast from their phone to the TV, <laughs> and I gotta talk about this. So one of the guys from, his name's James, from the, or the earlier scene, who was this part of this friend group, he now flips houses. Yes. So here we are at a house I just bought this morning. And he has his own house flipping show? That he does, he streams live the the first tour yeah. before anybody's even gone into yeah. it. It's like, all right, just got just the key got from house. the foreclosure. Go and look <laughs> at it. Now it was scheduled to be demolished. However, the foundation studs and plumbing seem to be in good shape. And we're watching it and we're seeing him from an alternate camera. Yes. But then it cuts to him, and he's, and he's, he's holding he's, his cell phone up. And I'm like, w Because then he finds a body. You never know, the owners might leave us a little surprise, huh? <sighs> but so he has this, there's a separate camera, and I don't know what this one camera is, because he finds a body, and we get a shot from outside the closet, and a body flops out of the closet, and, and he's, he's live streaming this, so everybody watching at the church is like, holy shit, a body, or whatever. Yeah. Um, and that's how we're introduced to the crime of, uh, of what's going on that, here. That is the hook. And then uh, a body falls out, and immediately somebody asks if they know who it is, and I'm like, it just fell out of the closet. <laughs> oh my gosh, I was at the church, and people were watching a live stream of Jamie flipping a house. Yes. Mom, seriously? Stop. Anyway, um, Jamie opened a closet door, and a dead body fell out. What? Yeah. Do they know who it is? Of course they don't know who it is. What? So then Bethany runs into Great Grace is her name. Grace, though she's at her orchard. That Bethany's at the orchard that her family owns, or whatever. And yes. this lady shows up. The FBI lady. The FBI, yeah, or the, or agency, the agency lady, lady, or whatever. Mom, this is my friend Grace Biddle from DC. Yeah. Um, shows up, and she's like, I think her name's Grace, and Bethany's talking to her, and and she's like. Bethany's like, oh, you're working at the classified facility right outside my town? How dare you? What are oh, you doing God. here? Oh, oh, God, the dialogue. I've been stationed at Mount Hideaway for the past two weeks. You're working at the classified facility outside my hometown. Bethany used to work for that facility as well, we find out. And, and there was an explosion or something, and Grace... <clears throat> gave her a leave of absence to like take some time off wasn't that like four years ago though uh, i thought but apparently it just happened because she just got back to the town i don't know i don't and what happened in august wasn't your fault <laughs> no it wasn't i was ordered to put a civilian in harm's way against my better judgment i know i know and we're not going to go down that road again i approved your leave for as long as you need Okay. The details in this movie are not the strongest suit. Uh, not not. The Brian, strongest. you're telling me that she's working at that exact same facility that I worked at. That secret facility that is outside of town yeah. that is super super secret. <laughs> yeah. You're working at the classified facility outside my hometown. And if you're drinking well, you know that you're my friend, and I say, I think I'll have myself a beer. You're working. At the classified facility outside my hometown. Uh, we get a classic Neil Breen type thing here where uh, Grace says to her, you were our best asset. You were our best operative. Jesus. <laughs> You're the best operative and asset handler I've ever met. Um, and something happened in August. It wasn't her fault. It was some sort of explosion. And what happened in August wasn't your fault. <laughs> no, it wasn't. I was ordered to put a civilian in harm's way against my better judgment. I know, I know, and we're not gonna go down that road again. They don't ever give us any background on this. I think maybe we were supposed to get it in 
like a future movie maybe they're gonna go back into it because oh, we God. get wicked uh, sequel bait at the end of this film uh, just make a complete film no man you gotta sequel bait the shit out just of it just make a complete movie right I, that was the thing it's like if you're gonna make this type of movie just wrap it up like if you wanna leave a little like something that could be a sequel sure like, but at least wrap up this movie Star, the, here, a good example is Star Wars A New Hope is a completed film yeah. by itself you don't even need episodes or no. any of the other movies yeah. it is completed by itself yeah but then you get stuff that's just this like sequel this one bait, in, sequel this bait. one hey, i'm a grumpy old man and i don't like things now compared to the way they used to be in particular it, it doesn't have an actual ending so the ending of star wars yeah like you said it, you, you watch that movie by itself perfect great it, it makes sense that there's more after but there doesn't need to be this one it's like this movie just cuts off halfway through and is like, well, it already goes an hour and 45 minutes, but it still doesn't get a ha- Apparently that wasn't enough runtime to wrap up everything they needed to in this film because we got a sequel bait real hard for another one. <laughs> and you shouldn't be here for long. Hmm. So you think somebody's going to find this pretty soon? Oh, I'm sure of it. The peaches will be ripe and about a week and the pickers will be all over this spot uh and then uh basically grace asks her to investigate this dead body that they found and it's but uh, you get no help no backup okay who do i have for support well uh that's the thing the agency's barred from conducting operations on u.s soil so you're on your own this is technically a black op <laughs> no i oh, this this dialogue thanks. felt like it was ripped straight out of my shirt <laughs> So bad. No fucking warrant. No backup. Well, you just want me to stick my neck out there, and if something goes wrong, I get left out to fucking dry. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're telling me I gotta go in, no backup, and put my ass on the line. Good God. <laughs> oh. So good. Yes. Okay. So I'm investigating murder with no official authority, no support, and if it goes south, I'm hung out to dry. I get left out to fucking dry. <laughs> <laughs> and then one of my other favorite things in this movie is how much face acting all of this. <laughs> okay, the lead actress, her face is all over the place. All over the place, Kyle. Constantly in this movie, and I feel like the cinematographer was trolling them eventually <laughs> because I don't know if you noticed this. It's my favorite thing in this film is that when people start making weird faces, the cinematographer just starts slow zooming in <laughs> on them as they're like, oh. I had a few meetings with Frank on behalf of local businesses to influence his position. So I was fine with him. But she's her face is all over the place. And she does this thing. She's like rem- apparently remembering something bittersweet because she's like. <sighs> oh, and then it like drifts off into a flashback or something like that. There's so much going on. Oh, and this is the car in the river scene. <laughs> Because we get a flashback and they're fishing, right? Are they going fishing? I don't remember. Something like that. She pulls up to to where James is and she has a flashback where she remembers something sad. And then we get this flashback to her and Jamie walking along like they were fishing or something. Yes. And Rose is missing. One of their other friends whose name is Rose either went missing or I don't. Mm. It doesn't matter. But they come across. (laughs) They they say, hey, look, isn't that that Rose's Rose's car? car? Is that Rose's car? The, the wide shot the they river. take of this is fantastic. <laughs> it is. So it's a wide shot and there's a river on the side and then there is a, a, a magazine cutout of a car <laughs> pasted onto the screen. Rose! You see her? I'll see her anywhere. To be, I'll put it this way. It's so... <laughs> contrived yeah. to believe that a vehicle could possibly look like this in the water. 
it is essentially planking yeah. on the bank of the river. Like, like it is, it is just the river. elevated completely. Yeah. And you can see, like I said, it, I, I think the best way to describe it is, is it looks like somebody, like when you're doing like a, 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 like a project in elementary school and you're cutting out magazines and you cut out a car <laughs> and you paste it to some yes. other picture. It like, looks that's like a, that's that. How, that's how Photoshop and Premiere work, right? Yeah. It's, it's, it's like cardboard. You just yeah. it's construction it on paper. there, yeah. Oh, it's so good. And uh, all I could think the whole time was your car was lost in the river <laughs> your soul was lost in the river god damn billy owens <laughs> so good uh and they just assume rose died yeah the water was really high last night because of the storm you, you don't think what was she doing here No body, no, no nothing. nothing. Her car's just by the river, and they're like, well, she died in the yep, river. Yep, she had, She's she dead. Has to be she dead. has to be dead in the river. Okay. Rose was lost in the river. In the river! And then we cut back, uh, and apparently Bethany, well, it explains that Bethany tried to give Rose to help with the explosion at the warehouse investigation. There was an explosion at a warehouse, and, and Bethany was investigating it to see what happened and wanted Rose's help, but Rose was like, no, and none of this matters. It's all sequel bait yeah. because this whole story is going to become relevant oh, in the sequel. God. Everybody in the town says that our dad is responsible for the explosion that killed those workers. How can we fight that? By proving that he didn't do it. We know somebody set him up to take the fall and, well, there must be evidence somewhere. We're just high school kids. So she goes, she goes to investigate because she shows up at this house where they found the body and she's talked to Jamie for a few minutes and they have some great dialogue. And then she goes in to investigate because she's uh, uh, inoperative. And her friend, this is where we're introduced to her friend who I can't remember her name. The, the vet? Stacy or something. Right. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and and who's also, she's the veter town's veterinarian yes. and also their medical examiner. Yes. Amy, Beth, what are you doing here? Because it's a small town. And I'm guessing like, cornered, right? Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. Well, I don't know about corner, but yeah. Well, that's what a medical examiner, that's what, yeah. She likes, well, but she does, she's like a forensic scientist. She like is taking crime scene pictures when mm. when she shows up and she just lets her friend but, walk into yes, this crime scene. And, well, I know it's an active crime scene, but you know it's technically against regulations, but... Come on in. Every single scene we have with her on the phone, aside from this one scene, she has a different, a different animal. animal. Oh, hi, Levi. I know, just listen. Okay, so. Well, I was like, okay, so somebody involved in this production owns a petting zoo or something because it, every It shot. is everything from an albino Billy's python to hermit crabs. Hermit crabs. To a hedgehog. Hedgehog, a bunny rabbit. Bearded dragon. Bearded dragons. Just every time they cut back, she's just holding a different thing on camera. Like, I'm a veterinarian. I have animals. Uh, and the hedgehog is adorable. <laughs> Nobody knows who owns this place. Maybe some. We'll, we'll talk about that hedgehog. <laughs> Uh, so they 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 find her kind of doing a, they're like she's like surveying the crime scene where they found this body and then uh, they're talking to the sheriff who, who oh, the sheriffs in this movie's costumes are so they're pretty great they clearly, they are uh, it's 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 just a brown polo yeah. that they just were like here's some adhesive sticker yeah and then they have like a little dollar store Halloween sheriff badge <laughs> pinned yeah. like literally like a dollar store sheriff badge pinned to them and my favorite is that one of them has a is like a traffic cop uh, shirt because it has a badge on the arm mm. that they blur out every time it's in the movie because you and you, but they don't blur it enough you can see that it says like traffic court under it or something like that. it's so great um and so the one of the sheriff guys is hitting on the medical examiner or examiner or whatever it's classic hijinks uh i just want you to know uh your crime scene is completely secure here i'm making sure of that thanks travis uh they find out we realize somebody was camping in the building and they they're like "Ooh, there's somebody sleeping here it looks like somebody's been living here yeah and pretty recently too the expiration date on this yogurt is next month. Then she goes, says she needs to go talk to Jamie. Um, but it's been a long time since she talked to Jamie, so she's going to practice her, her conversation first on the dog. Like, how about that dead guy you found? This was a lot Classic of Hallmark. Classic Hallmark movie. Bethany Shanholtz is not like other girls. 
Um, and then we find out they dropped the little kernel that a whole two trucks worth of apples got stolen at one point, and that's important for later. It's not important. It's just really not important. I loaded up two trucks of apples yesterday to go to the cidery up north, and they still haven't arrived. That's weird. Also, this woman, I don't know if you notice this, everywhere she goes and she walks around, she keeps her cell phone tucked into the front yes, waistband of her pants really like a psychopath. Awkward. It's so <laughs> weird. I was like, oh, apparently homeschooling doesn't teach you about also, pockets or also, purses. <laughs> compared to all the other actress actresses in the film, she is a giant. She's very tall. Mm -hmm. Katie was like, how tall? <laughs> she went several times and she saw her on screen. She is very, very tall. Um, yeah. Uh, and she wears the same riding boots like all the time. Yes. Like, so it's clank, clank, yeah. clank. Yeah, you can hear her coming from a mile away everywhere she goes. Uh, where they're like sweet. Like, like you hear that? Boots. It's an investigator. Yeah. Get out of here. Get out of here. <laughs> She's like, I never catch anybody. <laughs> uh, um, well, you know, you're our best agent if it wasn't for those damn heels. <laughs> Oh, uh, so they, they run in, uh, so she finds, uh, she talks to Jamie or something, doesn't matter, uh, but eventually she dis discovers this guy who's, she goes to this house, the dead guy's house, mm -hmm. and she finds somebody uh, was was is camping out there, and it's, I don't remember this character's name. Um, does she have a name? I don't think she has a name, but uh, Angie, I think it's Angie, yeah, yeah, uh, who's been like sleeping, she's like a homeless kid, and yes. she's been like going from place to place. Who are you and what are you doing? Here? Calm down. I, I heard the guy who lived here died and I just wanted to borrow a few things. They're talking. She calls Grace at one point. And I love she calls Grace on the phone while she's at this house. Mm -hmm. And she's like, Grace, I'm doing some investigating. And she's, she's like, don't worry. This line is secure. I'm like, it's just a cell. It's your cell phone. Yeah, I don't know if it's secure. secure. It doesn't I feel like that's not secure. This is Grace. Hey, Grace, it's Bethany. This line's secure. In SA, it's not secure. And then Grace just hangs up on her. <laughs> she's just like, she's like, I need help with the and and Grace is like, nope, click, and just hangs up. And I'm like, all right, because oh, that's what it, we're doing. But otherwise, you're on your own. Uh, and then uh, they, oh, they're drinking tea, and my favorite thing at the end of the scene, they they like clink their mugs together, very obviously empty. <laughs> like just they're like they they have like tea bags coming, the, the little rope coming out with a tea bag, but then they clank them together, and they're moving them around in ways clearly that don't have anything in them. <laughs> we can do this. All right. <laughs> Fantastic. But they need a tech guy, Kyle. Yes. Because she's going to be her, like, forensic specialist. She's putting together a crack team to solve this mystery. They go to Hector. Yes. And Hector has gear that is way, way too old <laughs> yeah. for what anybody would use. Well, Hi. Um, Amy, what is Bethany Shanholtz doing here? Do you know who she works for? Hmm. Amy, um... This is your computer expert. So they go, they film this at like a, a computer repair shop and he's just like in the back. So there's just like disassembled computers yeah. everywhere. And the most advanced thing he has in his, is a Nintendo Switch. Yeah. That they, <laughs> yeah. they couldn't entirely put in a frame. No, but you know what it was. Right? Yeah, <laughs> we see like a corner of it and it's like, great. Well, well, well. If it isn't the lovely and talented Amy Bradford. You have another code for me to crack from our dedicated but antiquated heroes down at the sheriff's department? I don't understand this scene. I need you to explain the scene. She's like, I know a guy. They go and they're talking to him. And and uh, Bethany's like, look, I need to know. I need to. I need a little taste of what you can do. I don't mean to sound rude, but I kind of need to see what you do. Well, I thought you'd never ask. And he goes, okay. And he starts typing on his computer. Probably sent her dick pics. Is that, that's what I, <laughs> not even kidding. That's what I thought this was supposed to be. But I didn't make, cause he types on the computer and then her phone like goes off. And she looks at it and she makes a face. And then he's like. And bam. <laughs> Oh. And then the scene ends, and I was like, wait, what did you just, did you hack her phone number and hack, did he like hack her nudes on her phone? Like, what is going on here? Like, I don't, I don't understand what this scene was supposed to be. Oh. So, you know. Uh, he works. 
And then I was like, no, what? What? I don't know. No, I don't know. it. Oh, it's no. so confusing. Yeah. Um, we get the press conference, uh, which has some great news, fake news people in it. I don't know if you noticed. There's a report in the background after they do the news conference. It's like the mayor or whatever. Um, and uh, our Bethany's talking to the mayor. In the background, there's like a news crew interviewing somebody. And the lady, the reporter, is holding a microphone that is clearly not a wireless microphone, but also doesn't have an XLR coming out of the box. She's just holding a mic up to people. Is it a shotgun mic? No, no, it's, it's at front- least not a shotgun okay, mic. It is like a hand mic. But uh, it's very clearly a hand mic that you need to plug in because it doesn't have, like, the transmitter or anything on it. But she's just, like, moving You know, you know where they didn't go? The Lenny G School of Newscasting. <laughs> yeah. Lenny G reporting for News News Today. We have gotten into the crime scene of a possible homicide. And I love, so the, then the mayor has to do some really heavy lifting dialogue-wise. Right here. And you can right. tell he's trying so hard uh. to memorize these lines. He's like, well, like in any growing town, there's a constant struggle between the past and the future. In Stevens Mill, it's between the farmers and shopkeepers who built the town and the outside corporations. Those <laughs> bastards. Who want to come in and use the land for other things. Who want to come in and use the land for other things. <laughs> it's like, this guy is killing. Like, you could tell he had to, because he does these all in like one take, and you can tell he's struggling to like remember, because they're huge, long, like, uh, lines with like a bunch of different information in them, and you can tell he's just barely has them memorized, but he's struggling a little bit. Frank Bavier was right in the middle of a battle between Walter Brenneman, the banker who works with the farmers, and Omni, who wants the farmland zone commercial. But he does get through them. Uh, and very clearly and very obviously, his like second in command, his assistant guy, evil. Like as soon as you see him, I'm yeah. like, oh, this dude's evil. He's wearing like black leather and has like silver hair sticking straight up and he, he looks like a villain. I was like, all right, well. I wonder if he's gonna be bad. Uh, then James and Bethany reunite and it's awful. It's a nightmare. It's- <laughs> Bethany? Jamie. I actually go by James now. Um, it's more professional. Uh, yeah. A nightmare. And we're introduced to Allison, who's the daughter of the banker oh, that one James quick thing. is fucking- Well, James and I teach a class for the kids about finances and accounting since, you know, <laughs> He's a big real estate mogul. And well, my daddy owns a bank. Wow, well that is that is so charitable. One quick thing. Okay. So James, his sister is Rose. Is it? And 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 wait, what? Here, yes, yes. And their last name is Wood. Rosewood? James Woods. And James Wood. <laughs> I they're yes. si- they're siblings? Yes. Where was that said? That was in that was I saw that in the credits. They were both named Wood. That's never mentioned once in the movie, I don't think. I think, it might, think. One, I think it might be mentioned early on or something like that. But the, the point being is, yeah, no, they're... I had no idea they were siblings. That's wild. Leave our family alone, Bethany. Rose. We've been through enough. Rose, we are family. You know that. Rose, I'm gonna find a way to clear dad's name. Yeah, they go to his house. Or his, uh, she's at James's house and his parents are there and I love his, I think it's his parents or Allison's parents, somebody's parents, I don't know. Someone, yeah. But they're they're like a quintessential, these are adults. They're both, the dad is wearing a business, like slacks, a uh, button down shirt and a tie, sitting on the couch, drinking a scotch. The mom God. is wearing a full cocktail <laughs> dress with pearls, lounging on the couch, drinking a glass of red wine, see, reading a magazine. See, Here's where I'm relatively unconvinced because what he needs is a cardigan sweater, a thick frame glasses, a a pipe, yeah, possibly, and his scotch. The pipe is the only thing he's missing from like the like. Oh, this is what adults look like. It's like <laughs> it's like this is adult starter pack. I I just love that she's full lounging on the couch, drinking red wine, wearing a dress and pearls. It's amazing. I love it so much. Um, but they're explaining that ever since the explosion and the Omni Millennium buyout, <laughs> the name of the corporation, the evil corporation in this movie, is Omni Millennium, which is great. So. Who else was trying to buy the land? Omni Millennium and their foreign investors. It's just like a made, it's like such a great made up like business corporation company incorporated like (laughs) Omni Millennium. Uh, And they're taking over and there's more big box stores and this is where we get more of the homeschool commercial (laughs) where they're talking and I love this. They're like, the mom is like, or somebody says to one of them like, weren't you homeschooled? I thought you were homeschooled, James. And he's like, yeah, in elementary school, but then in high school, I joined a co-op. And they're like, what's a (laughs) co-op? Whoa! Co-op. 
co-op. Basically, the parents would teach subjects they were experts in, and、uh, even lead some field trips. And I love the other guy, the dad or whatever, is like, yeah. And don't you know, many successful people are homeschooled. Many successful people are homeschooled. Olympic athletes, movie stars. <laughs> Olympic athletes, movie stars. I think it shows initiative. Those are his two well, examples. For the, for the record, movie star is very—it's a—it's a very broad one. Yeah. Some people don't even have high school degrees. Quentin Tarantino. Oh yeah, but I just love—he's it. like some people are very successful. People are homeschooled, like Olympics Trying, athletes. It's like we're movies. S- we're selling this to you. We're selling it. <laughs> it's so hard,、uh, and I love it. He goes, yeah, really successful people. I think it shows initiative. I think it shows initiative. Very entrepreneurial, James. What does being homeschooled shows initiative? That doesn't make any sense. Okay, great, fine. And then、uh, don't stay in school, kids. Go out, and make your dreams happen right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm got no comment. <laughs> stay here. Stay as long as you can. For the love of God, cherish it. Also, this whole time they're having that conversation with the parents in the couch while she's they're like lounging. There's some random person out in the backyard. I don't know if you noticed that. There's walking around in the、oh, yeah, shot yeah, in their back. There's just somebody there. I'm like, who is in your backyard? What is going on? My family has been in this town for. Basically,、uh, Bethany implies that Jamie might be in cahoots with the killer because he's gonna benefit from the guy dying. From, from oh yeah, this guy, or the, whatever. This because、uh, it's older real estate. Well, yeah,、guy. we haven't even got to the real estate. So guy Jamie's yet, a real but... estate guy. He flips houses. There's another older real estate guy who's like the only other realtor in town, who is his like his main competition. Yeah. But yeah, <laughs> yeah,、um, that, that's about what it means. Yeah. So and then because then Bethany goes to talk to this guy Rex,、mm. the real estate guy,、uh, because he somehow involved. I don't. Doesn't matter. It's it's. I don't care.、Uh, but there's it's this ex wife and ex husband work together at this real estate company and they have wacky hijinks because they don't like each other but they still work together even though they're divorced. Classic comedy setup. Rex, get in here! What? I was in a meeting. But during that scene where she's talking to him, this is one of those moments where he's yelling、yes. at his wife about coffee, and the shot is on、yes, Bethany yes. doing. Yes, yes. It's the reaction the shot. The wildest like,、uh, thing. Oh, oh. <laughs> Yo, Bat, is making coffee really that difficult? It's three teaspoons of Colombian, five tablespoons of Nicaraguan dark, and four tablespoons of Ethiopian. Times- <laughs> I was like, "What are you doing? What is going on?" Oh, it's so amazing.、Uh, and then we we cut away and we see that the the obvious bad guy is the bad guy.、Yeah. He's like sitting like in a basement with a black <laughs>、yes. leather coat and it's, black it's leather、amazing. gloves. They're like, "Okay, we, we got like a limestone basement <laughs> distillery. Yeah, can we shoot in this? Can that be our evil bad guy layer? Evil layer, yeah." Uh, and yeah, leather gloves for no reason, just in the bag. Like, maybe it's chilly down there. I don't know.、Um, but he's evil, and his he's part of the plot to to murder these people so that they can take over the town with the the Omni whatever <laughs> Omni Millennium Company or something like that. Hey, Carl, it's Rex. Yeah, Rex. You asked me to call you if anybody inquired about the Bavier House. Okay. Thanks for letting me know. Does this have anything to do with our friends or?、Uh... The warehouse. I told you, we only talk about that in person, not over the phone. The guy that died was the zoning commissioner, I think that that they murdered yes, earlier yes. because he was he he was gonna help let the 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 evil corporation take over, but then he decided against it, so they had to kill him to get him out of the <laughs> way or whatever. I I don't even know. It doesn't matter. And then uh, uh he shows up though, and this is where uh she's with Angie、uh, in like a church. I don't know where she is. Yeah, they're Carl squatting shows somewhere. Up,、right? Yeah, and Carl shows up with a gun. His name's Carl. The evil、yes. guy's name's Carl. He shows up with a gun and he grabs Angie and has her at gunpoint. And he like walks into the room that Bethany's in, like doing her investigation. And he's like, "I'll kill Angie or whatever." And then they're standing there facing off, and <laughs> Bethany just pulls up her like emergency flashlight. Like, oh like, oh no. no! He's like, "No,、oh, too many lumens." <laughs> It is it is a great commercial for like those uh 
you know, those like late night commercials you see for like a flashlight. They're like run it over with a truck or whatever, and you can blind bad guys <laughs> with it. Everybody has a flashlight, but can your flashlight do this? Or how about this? Too many lumens. He's got one of those. She ordered her her super mag light extreme. But from. he's like, I, I gotta I gotta run because you blinded me with a flashlight. Yeah. Bye. Uh, run away. <laughs> Um, and yeah, so he takes off, um, but then he shows up again and gets a gun behind her in her back because he, he was still there or something and she's on the phone and she doesn't realize. Okay, now you're going to take me to your car and drive me out of town. Uh, but she disarms him. She mm -hmm. does some kung fu. Yeah. And he's like, where'd you learn to fight like that? And I love this line. She goes, where'd you learn to fight like that? I was homeschooled. What? My physical education included bailing hay and studying Shaolin Kung Fu. Oh, yes. It's so good. Oh, it's so good. I love it. And um, if you want to be a badass, you can be homeschooled, homeschooled too. too. Yeah. Uh, uh, and then the cops show up and we get a classic. They cut in the slow-mo as the cops start arresting them. They, they, it's like all in slow-mo oh, as yeah. the cops Well, there's another the slow-mo thing that happens later on oh, yeah. that was blowing my mind. There's several slow-mo things, but this one with the coffee is there? Yeah. yeah. This one, though, the cops show up and the music starts playing and they're like, it's like classic, like, oh, here come the cops bursting in and let's go into slow-mo and like play swelling music or whatever. His, but we find out he immediately got it gets away, mm -hmm. but we don't see it. They just they're like the it, next it's a, scene. It's a line ends like he escaped. Yeah, he escaped. Yeah, escaped. Escaped. Guys, that was the sheriff's department. They were transporting Carl to lockup when a van of heavily armed men ambushed them. Nobody was hurt, but Carl escaped. Escaped. Uh, and he just goes back to his basement and just yeah. sits in his basement yeah. again. Yeah, what? <laughs> the exact same basement that he was hanging out no, in no, before. is this where they go? Here's the thing. Is this, they were go is this where they go to her making her coffee or him making his coffee, the guy who, who dies? Because they go to where Bethany is making her coffee. That's later. That's later? Okay. Because that's when she figures it out, that's, I think, or something. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. I know. I, do, I, I, I truly, have to talk about that one, too. There's two This is the, this is the next one is the slow-mo yes. coffee, and that's the guy. It's Rex it's doing so it. It's so insane. It's so pointless. Yes. So it's, it's he's slowly pouring coffee to pad out this movie. <laughs> They show the whole thing. They, it's slow mo coffee pouring, then it's slow mo opening sugar packets yes. and pouring sugar or sweetener or whatever in. And then it's slow mo pouring creamer in, and it's it, it goes for it, it's like what you do when you first get a new camera, and you're like, oh, this thing shoots super and then high speed. Slow mo pouring whiskey. In. <laughs> yeah, and like oh, this thing shoots super, and it, very clear whiskey. It's just yeah, water. Which, by the way, Bailey's. Come on. This is, yeah, they 100% got the camera and they're like, oh, you guys know this thing shoots at like 120 FPS? Oh my God. We gotta try that. Oh, what can we do? I know, let's just make coffee on camera for like 10 minutes. Great, awesome, sweet. Oh, and there's also a random side plot that is in for literally one scene that means nothing is that her, Bethany's younger sister is a commissioned artist. Yeah. I was actually gonna stay home today. I have to finish a commission for someone in New York. Oh, well, that's okay, sweetie. Can I see it? Yeah, one second. And it's never brought up again. She just has a drawing. And I think that's probably just this actress's actual real life little sister who's actually an artist. And they were like, we got to put this in the movie somehow. All right. <laughs> I know who he is. He's that young upstart that's taking all your business. You know, I told you years ago that social media was the wave of the future. The ex-wife who works with Rex, the real estate guy, she tells, she yells at him from the other room, drop dead. And then he does. Uh, drop dead. Rex? Oh, Rex? Oh, Rex, honey. Oh my goodness. Oh, Rex, honey. Oh, oh. Great. We got a good line with that later whenever the yeah. investigation yeah. starts with they, him. They, they do that, but then she they bring it back up so that she can say, it's the first time 
time he ever did anything I told him to without me having to repeat it a hundred times. <laughs> Oh, I also love that she yells 911 at her phone before she calls 911. 911? I had a I had a moment like that when my phone was really screwing up. I couldn't get, I thought it had a voice function or something. I couldn't answer a phone call. And so I was just shouting at my phone, "Answer! Answer!" This is magic. Agent! Agent! Answer, damn you! <laughs> I don't even watch you yell at your phone. <laughs> New mini series. Kind of AI are you? New mini series. Kyle yelling at inanimate objects. <laughs> you are a that. lamp. That's our new. <laughs> you are a lamp. That's our new Patreon exclusive tier. Twenty dollars a month. You get one five second video per month of Kyle screaming at some inanimate object. Toast. Make toast. Make toast now. <laughs> This is the best idea we've ever had. This is our million dollar idea, Kyle. You screaming at inanimate Kyle screams at inanimate objects. So that's the theme song. We just came up with There we go. Perfect. Oh, shit. Kyle screams at inanimate objects. Make toast. Then the sheriff's department calls the, the medical examiner and she's like, there's been another suspicious death. Oh, oh no. no. Guys, that was the sheriff's department. There's been another suspicious death. That's two murders in less than a week. Um, also, when they then go to investigate Rex at his his dead body, we get an exterior shot of his his real estate building. Did you notice the sign? Oh, that it was incredibly, incredibly fake as shit. <laughs> yeah, like everything, that, everything, is, yeah, everything is just like in post. Just stick something on top of it. Yeah. They I, did they do that with Hector's shop too? Where they just like designed yes. Hector and stuck it on top? They did. Well, no, I don't know about that. Maybe, but there's lots of them. Like the orchard at the end, mm -hmm. uh, their sign is uh, composited like over the actual sign. And there's several where they just. And then later, the, this this particular one the uh the the real estate we cut back to it later and they forgot to photoshop it in that one so it's just the normal <laughs> it's just That's the normal great. sign in the same shot later but this uh. one this one is just rex's face smiling on the sign and again it looks like they cu cut it out with with fisker kid scissors and glued it on the fucking but screen they eventually get the uh the toxicology report on rex yeah it, it was, was poison Cyan, or was cyanide. it? No, it was arsenic. Ar no, cyanide. It was cyanide. It was cyanide? I think that's what they say. But yeah, it's whatever you can make with apple seeds, because yes. that's important. That's the that's the big thing. And somebody put cyanide in that organic sweetener he uses. Cyanide? That's nasty. The killer must have noticed that lots of people drink coffee, but of course only Rex used that sweetener. So once once she the, the epiphany that we have to find out that this was some sort of poison is Bethany is sitting at her notebook trying to cram stuff together. Yeah. And she has the most comically oversized coffee mug I've ever seen. <laughs> it is uh, it is insane. It's like it's like 24 ounces of coffee mug. I have a 24 ounce coffee mug. What is it like a tankard? Yeah. Well, it's just a big coffee mug. I don't know. I, hers is pretty fucking big. But um, they make big coffee mugs for, you know, basic bitches. That's what we got to drink our coffee, bro. <laughs> um, we need all the coffee. Uh, but, yeah, they, she uh, – and I love that, like, her epiphany is her just rifling through the sweetener. I just, have but a, I, I just have an image of you wearing a scarf with, like, a maybe a beret, and you're at Starbucks ordering – So I'm like a, a French basic bitch now? <laughs> Why do I got to be French, <laughs> Kyle? <laughs> You're just, you're just ordering like, I need a triple latte Vindi and make sure it has extra foam. Triple latte Vindi. V Vinti. It's Vindi. 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 <laughs> Vindi, 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 Vindi. Whatever. It's fucking uh, coffee. Just um, 20 ounces. So but then that's being French. It's not French. It's Italian. Whatever. <laughs> I, think. I, I never go to Starbucks. So I got no clue. And FYI, it's called a Venti because it's 20 ounces. 20. Venti. True. Something she rem she figures it out because of the sweet. I don't even know. It doesn't matter. Hey Hector, um, when you downloaded those video files, how far back did you go? Okay, I'll be right over. Uh, we got there was a one really great audio thing in the um, in that when she goes to that boutique with her friend and she's like taking pictures of her the 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 friend's audio would, must have been too quiet because at one of her sentences like as she trails off they like cranked the audio up at the end so it's just like that if he got murdered his half of the business would get somebody else uh, then she quotes Journey because 
Fuck her. Um, uh, just a small town girl living in a lonely world. Katie watched the last 30 minutes of this with me. And every time Angie's on screen, who's the, the homeless girl or whatever, Katie's like, what? expression does she think her face is making? No, no, the expression that she's, that she's trying to hide is, oh god, oh god, what have I gotten myself into? That's what it looks, yes, because she walks, every scene she walks into, she's just like... But it doesn't fit in every scene. I'm like, what are you trying you, you to do? Can, you can hear her screaming, <laughs> screaming behind that acting. <laughs> but she walks into the greenhouse where they like grow their apples, sit, like start their apples. Wait, yeah, or whatever. whenever she walks in there, her it is such a foreign concept to her yeah, that you could she's... possibly make you know start apple plants her mind like this. is melted by this she walks <laughs> in she's like what you grow things indoors <laughs> like she's <laughs> like this is insanity have you always done this whole farming thing a matter of fact, no. I have degrees in linguistics and political science. But then she explains that she didn't get to go to college because she had a another oh, homeschooling commercial. She's like, um, also, also, everybody in this town used to be a spy. Her mom is also a, yeah. was an operative or whatever. But is this like the Langley retirement home? Yeah, what is I this? Guess. And for 10 years, I worked up at the Mount Hideaway facility. So you were a spy or... Something. I, so her mom used to be a spy, but they're talking, and and Angie's like, "Well, I had a I had a scholarship, and I was like going, I was gonna go to college, but then the explosion happened." I was an honor student, college bound. Um, I even had a few scholarships lined up, but then the explosion happened. Again, this mythical explosion that we know nothing about. She, she's bouncing back and forth between like foster home and like yeah. foster homes. And, and so stuff she like couldn't that. go to school. She couldn't go to public school. She says she's like, I was in public school, but I couldn't I couldn't catch up with the work because I kept moving around and stuff. And so now I'm homeless. I missed weeks of school because social services was always taking me from family to group home. And I'm like, you know, this all could have been voided if she was homeschooled. <laughs> That's literally what the movie's like. Or if Bethany didn't cause that explosion and ruin this kid's life. Bethany ruined everything. She fucked everybody over in this movie by with whatever that explosion, even though supposedly wasn't her fault. But we don't know because we never get any details about it. We don't know what happened. I think it's supposed to be in the sequel. The cyanide was made from apple seeds. I mean, I know that apple seeds contain a tiny amount of cyanide. There was a fair amount of residue in the mix, so I was even able to determine the type of apple that was used. So they find out that this the cyanide was made from one specific type of apple seed, and it's the only person who grows those apples in, like, the world is, is her yeah. mom, Bethany's mom or whatever. A semi-tart apple that was originally grown by President Thomas Jefferson. Yeah, my mom's the only orchard in town that actually grows them. Oh, oh no. And so they're, like, suspicious of her, and I'm like, you know, but, like, she sells those apples, yeah. right? Like and they, they also mentioned it only takes twenty seeds, which to is get like four cyanide. apples. It's something like because like there's like yeah. five or seeds in an apple or something like that. That's like four apples. Like you, yeah, yeah it takes nothing. Okay, um, but yeah, and so her mom is suspected of maybe being involved, but none of it matters. This scene though, where she gets confronted. Uh, where the cop shows up to like interrogate Bethany's mom about like, we're, we're, whoa, we found this poison and your apples are the only apples that can make this poison. He's confronting her. And I love Bethany comes flying up in her 2004 Honda Civic that's falling <laughs> apart. And she gets out like a fucking hashtag well, yeah, girl yeah, boss. and starts she, she all, She's like driving around on this gravel road. She's almost drifting in front of the sheriff. <laughs> and she gets out and I can just hear like, uh, this is my fight song. Oh, <laughs> Oh, it, 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 feel, it feels 
like uh, it feels like a power anthem. Oh, it's, it's so good. I just every time. And I love the it sheriff so much. should should have been like that. You're 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 lucky. I'm here on different business. That's a traffic violation. <laughs> yeah, right. And then, uh, but the, the, this confrontation is is encapsulates everything. There's so many terrible things in this. Half the shots are out of focus. Two truckloads. If we could just go to the warehouse in the back. And um, he, well, this is the one where we see his like traffic cop <laughs> patch blurred out the entire time. Um, the dialogue is terrible with this weird back and forth they're having. Isn't it true that you were at McNear's office just yesterday? Care to explain what that was about? I had some real estate questions and he answered them. But I certainly wouldn't have gone and killed someone I'd never met before. Uh, they also have one light sitting on the ground blaring up at them that people keep walking in front of and in and out of. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, oh, it's so much in this one scene is so good. This is my fight uh, And then I got to talk about this one. One, We're almost done. I got to get this one scene. They, sh they, they figure out this warehouse, this abandoned warehouse. Where they had these two truckloads of apples stored at. Yes, because uh, Angie had a memory of this that she saw these people. She was crashing there and saw these people with these trucks of now, apples. You want to know what would have been a good touch for this, which totally could have worked uh, completely organically within the script, is that she eats one of these apples they've been growing, and she's like, this seems really familiar. And then it Oh, because she was eating early. them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that would make But they sense. didn't do that. No. And it was like, come no. on. And then I got, what is this scene? She goes to the warehouse because um, uh, Bethany doesn't want to take her to investigate. <laughs> yes. So Angie's going to go look yeah. on him for herself. And then she gets there and there's just Rex's business cards everywhere. everywhere. What was that? They're like breadcrumbs leading her into the... I, I don't understand what the fuck she's doing. She goes and she walks in and she's like picking them up. Yeah. And then she's like, I found this. It's a clue. A clue, a clue. They like, really, well, they really wanted Rex to like buy this building, but wasn't it owned by like the zoning guy? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, or something like that. But like, I don't understand it because then, uh, but then uh, Bethany shows up and she's like, oh, look, I found this card. It's a clue. And, 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 but like, even while they're talking, you can see one of his business cards just sitting on the, like a rafter behind them. Like, I was like, what does this movie think how clues work? Like, they just like somebody like, what is going on? It's so fucking weird. It's like, wait, wait, this oxygen is a clue. <laughs> it's so fucking strange. This real estate guy's card is everywhere. That has to be a clue. Uh, and then uh, Angie asked her if you've ever done anything you regretted. <laughs> and um, we get a, how, how we about get a <laughs> PTSD flashback. Have you ever done anything you regretted, Bethany? Yes. <laughs> I was like, oh, it just flashes back to the beginning or to her agreeing to be in this film or writing this yes. movie. <laughs> Have you ever done anything you regretted, Bethany? Yes. <laughs> uh, oh, and then, but no, but we're, we get the setup of another character who we never see again, but it, I, it, this is at least kind of clever because there was, we're, we see her dog at one point earlier and they're like, where'd you get this dog? It's so cute. And she's like, that's a long story. And then they don't talk about it. And then this one, the guy that she goes to meet while wow, this is a flashback to her as an mm -hmm. operative. And there's some guy she's working with. Who's like giving her information yes, or whatever. Yes. And he has the dog. He, she got that guy killed. <laughs> yeah, she got the guy. And the guy's like, oh, I need protection. And she's like, you'll get it eventually. And by the way, his acting is oh, spot on. Oh, it's so good. They, they know something that we aren't catching. Everything is going to be fine. Um, uh, but that's how she got the dog. I was like, okay, that's at least interesting. Like, they don't connect those dots perfectly. They kind of leave you to figure it out. And I mm -hmm. like that. I thought that also, was at Also, you know, you know something else you might have regretted? How about that explosion? Yeah. It ruined my life. Everybody's <laughs> life. It ruined everybody's life, apparently, but we don't even know what it what the heck happened. And then and then but my favorite thing in the scene is that, so we have this flashback and then it cuts back to the diner they're sitting in, and Bethany's just like staring, and, and Angie goes, Hey, are you okay? Hey, Bethany, are you okay? And I like to imagine that she asked her, do you regret anything? And then Bethany just For the, went, the entire time. <laughs> didn't say anything. It's just sitting there. And Angie's like, what's, uh, what's uh, going on? Oh, are you flashing back? Is that what's going on? Are we flashing back? Hang on, hang on. She's in the middle of a flashback. We can't, we can't interrupt this. We can't interrupt this. 
fucking amazing. Um, I would like to do that. If somebody, if I just notice that somebody stares blankly into space, yeah. I want to imagine they're having a flashback at that <laughs> yeah. moment. And then I'm like, hang on, hang on, hang on. They're having a flashback. They're flashback. <laughs> Don't interrupt them. It's very dangerous to interrupt somebody in the middle of a flashback. <laughs> you never know what will happen. Uh, um, then we get another flashback to Rose refusing to help investigate the explosion. Bethany wants to investigate the explosion. Rose is like, no. And then she leaves. And then that's when they think she dies yes. after that, I think. Um, but uh, we find out probably the reason she didn't want to investigate the explosion is because she she's responsible. It? Yeah. Or something. I don't, none of it matters because we don't ever, uh, yeah, uh, we, we don't get to find out in this movie. It's a sequel bait. They find a secret camera in Rex's office, right? Yeah. And they were like, yeah, oh, I was it? using this for recording. That's super illegal. Recording meetings without permission is highly illegal, so. It's like, you're in Virginia. It's oh, a single, up, is it's it? a single party okay. consent state. I was wondering. I'm like, you gotta be fucking kidding me. Yeah, it's, it's his own <laughs> office too. Like it's his yeah. place of business. He can he can have a camera if he wants. Yeah, I, yeah. But it's one of those things of like, like we maybe I don't know maybe we know because we took like basic right. com law. Yeah, or maybe it's not supposed to be set in Virginia. I mean, it is in Virginia. Yeah. That's where they filmed it. Maybe it's not supposed to be set there. I don't know if they ever say the know. state. Maybe it's supposed to be like a two-party state or something. I don't know. But yeah, because if it is supposed to be Virginia, yeah, it's <laughs> weird. I guess it's blackmail. Or insurance. Uh, and then we get some comic relief that the movie just decides to quit doing. So the, uh, Hector is like doing some comic <laughs> relief on the phone, and he's like making jokes. And, and then the... The, the the movie is like n enough and just fades out while he's talking. <laughs> I'll take it upstairs and copy it. I'll be back in a second. Copy that, boss. Did you see what I did there? Let's copy that. You know, control C and the Bethany. So she hung up on me. We find out that this corruption goes high because the lady who works at the police station mm -hmm. calls somebody on her phone. And by calls, I mean very clearly just has her phone on like Carl call <laughs> Carl but then we see it and it's just on the home screen yeah. by her face like clearly not called yeah. anybody it's like great the attention to details what really makes this film work mm. and then so Carl the revelation killed Rex it's like Dun dun dun! We well, already yeah, knew was, he was, it was the bad obvious? guy. <laughs> like what? It, it's played like this reveal where they like find this video that has him putting the poison in the coffee creamer. Which, by the way, the, his poison's what sweet and low? Yeah, literally. It's yeah, it's a packet of sweet and low or whatever that he put cyanide in. But it's in. organic. It's organic stuff that they slip. Nobody else or uses or something. It doesn't matter. Um, and so he. Uh, but yeah, it was Carl, and it's like yeah, we. He escaped. Uh -huh. He was a. He was. He uh -huh. was gonna kill you all earlier, and then he got away. And so it seems. But who stabbed reasonable. this person to death on Halloween? <laughs> was it? Maybe it was Mike Meyer. Uh, I don't know, Kyle. I don't know. Carl Corso putting the poison in Rex McNear's coffee sweetener. We got him dead to rights. Uh, and then he. But then Carl comes in and confronts them as they're watching this video, and he's gonna kill them because they know the secret that he killed Rex and is working for the evil corporation. Oh, but how are we gonna have, how are we gonna save him? We but got Hector. Hector needs a moment because he all he's done it right now has been in like a few scenes where he's just yeah, sitting and sitting typing. and typing. He he has a he has a uh, a tank that shoots darts and he hits the button and a dart hits Carl in the head and causes him so like, much oh, discomfort. Oh God, no. That she is Here's able to take <laughs> literally. He's like, oh, the nerf dart of death. Oh God, have oh. my weapon. Um, and she grabs the gun, and then I love this. He just runs away. Yeah, he just runs away. <laughs> oh, you're kidding me. He's like, and door closed. Bye. Uh, bye. <laughs> Gone, um, and then he gets in a van and drives away with, with the, a shady, with, mysterious figure. Yeah, and then as but the, he like closes he closes the van door and then drives off and it's open. It's right? open. I was like, come on, guys. It's the, so easy. Like that's such an easy thing. I was like, and why would you drive away with the van door? Okay, great, awesome. Um. And then it fades 
to uh, Bethany and Stacy or whatever drinking tea on the porch out of mason out of jars. Mason jars, and I was like, oh god. Yes. Ugh. And they're from the they're they're. Well, here's they're, the thing: they're from the south, but also that's exactly something that would happen for like hipsters in New York or something. Like oh that. yeah, yeah, we did that for Halloween <laughs> for our Halloween costumes. Exactly. We were like Claire and Brad. We were drinking out of mason jars, but they're like they're they're like reminiscent. They're like, well, we've got our work cut out for us. This sequel's gonna be really tough. <laughs> like, do you think we're ever gonna find Carl? I don't know. He's either skipped town or he's planning something much worse. Either way, I've got my work cut out for me. She She's also gone. goes to Rose's qu- gravestone <laughs> with the with with the fakest rose I've ever seen. A it's, single uh, rose, and it also also. It is the gravestone she goes to is completely covered in moss. Like it is a hundred and fifty year old <laughs> gravestone that she puts. You the didn't rose know Rose was immortal, Kyle. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but she puts the rose down on the grave. Uh, but then we cut and we fade. Dun dun dun! And somebody's digging a hole in the ground. At first, I didn't know what the heck that sound effect was. I'm like, what are we? Because we just watching the rose yeah. and we're well, hearing no, this like. It, shink, it was shink. a very loud Foley sound. Yeah. And then they went for like in the scene, you know, like like yeah. actually live record sound. I was like, that that's very different. Yeah. Should have. Are you sure? Yeah, but they're digging a hole and they're like, he's like, is that deep enough? And she's like, yeah, Carl wasn't very thick or something. I don't know what she said. She said something like he was thin. He, he went up to bury him very deep. So they bar- they killed Carl. Mm-hmm. And Carl's they, Well, dead. they purposely buried him deep so he Carl, was discovered. Stay in the house, <laughs> Carl! <laughs> Carl! Carl! <laughs> Um, but yeah, they buried him uh, so that he could be discovered. Uh, we'll find out why in the mid-credit roll. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. But, uh, and then the camera slowly pans up this person in a red dress. Uh, it's not Roxanne. No. <laughs> it is Rose. Um, she's wearing that red dress, though. Roxanne. But it is Rose, and she turns to the camera. This is my hometown, my too. Hometown. <laughs> This is my hometown too. All right. All right. Sequel bait. Uh, and then we get a mid credit scene. The credits start to roll, comes back, and it's them leaving wherever they buried this this body. And then we find out. It's, it's the orchard. The orchard. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Like, I, don't, I guess that's oh, okay. Um, I love my favorite thing in the credits is that somebody shot a behind the scenes video of this and I want to watch it. There's a credited what? person that just says behind the scenes film and it's a person's name. And I was like, I need to know. Now that could mean literally somebody like one time used a phone to record like yeah. something or somebody could have made I, a documentary I'm about not, the no, making. I have to see the madness of the making of this film. <laughs> I know, I know. I really hope it's like a full on documentary or something. Uh, and then... Uh, they, they get a bunch of special thanks for places in Virginia, including Granny's Pancake Cottage. Yay! <laughs> uh, and also, this film was sanctioned by the Virginia Film oh, Organization God. or it whatever. It is like, here's film, Virginia tourism. In, yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, that's, uh, and then, like I said, sequel bait. Uh, we don't get any, nothing happens. This thing's ends. bad, bad. I, yes, I will agree that it's bad, bad. It teetered on the line for me. Because if it was, it's just too long and boring. What do you think? You could cut this down so much and lose nothing. Yeah. You would is, lose nothing in the concept of the yeah, film. Yeah, very and true. And you could cut down, you could cut 40 minutes out of this. Yeah. I, I, I Like, the thing is that I, I, I had enough fun watching it. It, it. The middle gets boring. I had enough fun watching it, though, because every, every now and then you get one of those weird push-in shots of somebody like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Making like a weird face and I'm like, what is happening? Okay, or, or for no reason, like super slow mo coffee. Um, and there's some stuff like that that's just really bad, but it's not. Overall, it's just kind of boring, and 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 none of the nobody. There's there's not a good standout like wacky performance. Everybody's just kind of bland, like and fine. Um, but yeah, so yeah, bad, bad. But it's close. If they did enough with the sequel, it could. It could <laughs> if they make a sequel, if could, they make a sequel. I am willing to watch it. Oh, I'm very willing to watch it. I just need answers on what's going on with Rose. I mean, it's her hometown too, Kyle. <laughs> I gotta know what she's up to. I gotta know about the explosion. I, 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 I think she might be uh, the Ozzy Mendez of this, where she's like zero uh, appeal gambit, where she's like, it was really her fault the whole time. And if you ruin this, you're ruining the peace within our town. <laughs> oh, I like that. She becomes, she like works up politically within the like the town and she like turns the whole town against Bethany. Yes. I love yes. that. I and love everybody rallies against her. 
I love that. That would be fantastic. And it's just Bethany and her friend and Hector have to like expose the secrets that actually Rose is the evil super villain who's taking over their. Oh, I, lo- I make that movie. Come on, <laughs> you can do it. Um, all right. Uh, as always, you can support us on Patreon, uh, podcast, all that, whatever. Uh, we need to do that. Um, <laughs> at some point. Um, you can also send us mail at our PO box. Uh, we have a video that'll be out. Hopefully. Might even be out before you're watching this. Um, I just need to edit it. We already recorded it. Um, we're going to be doing another one soon of uh, opening stuff that you guys sent. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a podcast called This Film is Lit where we talk about movies that are based on books. I don't know what we're, will be out when this is out. Um, we did just do Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark for Halloween. <laughs> Uh, and then something else come in. You know, just, just go look on iTunes. You'll find it. Uh, and the, uh, I think that's it. Uh, Kyle, you have that's a Twitch. Like you can watch you on Twitch. Yeah, yeah. You can watch me poorly play video stream games. Stream some video games every now and again on the old Twitch. Um, <clears throat> I might start doing that. I've been playing the Outer Worlds. Might be streaming a little bit of Outer Worlds at some point. That's a fun game. Uh, it's really good. It's really good. It's the people who made uh, New Vegas. Nice. It's very good. Nice. Um, anyways... That's it for this episode. Until next time, keep watching movies. Maybe not. You, you gotta know, buy it too. Because so, yeah. we had to buy it. It's on because Amazon. It's, but it's not on Prime. It's so new. I think it yeah. might be on Prime eventually. It'll probably be on Prime eventually. But right now, it's for sale. You can rent it. You Just, can rent it for a few you know, months. Uh, if you want. Don't necess- You don't necessarily have to watch no. Mount Hideaway Mysteries, X's, and Oh No's. <laughs> <laughs>